Coral bleaching is perhaps a recent phenomenon in terms of coral reef history, uh, been recorded really in the last 30 years and it, it's related to ocean temperature. Basically corals live very close to their threshold of about 29 or 30 degrees. As the temperature gets hot the, the, the corals get stressed. Bleaching and climate change in terms of reef health uh, at, at the moment mean that, that reefs are dying faster than they're recruiting. They're slow building structures because the, the oceans around here are so clean. We don't have a lot of nutrients, we don't have a lot of impacts in terms of, uh, in, or inputs in terms of, of sediments and stuff like that. So reefs grow very slowly in, the, in this environment uh, and obviously if the death rate is higher than the growth rate then we're seeing a net loss of reefs and reduction in reef area means reduction in fisheries habitat uh, and in other associated functions that depend upon healthy reefs. The coral reefs is calcium carbonate, the carbonic acid is acid and we can replicate what's going to be happening in the oceans in the long term here in the lab very quickly. If we take something like a shell, um, any piece of coral rock or uh, marl will do and it will react unfortunately with the acid. Um, vinegar at home will do this. We're using bench grade hydrochloric acid because hoping to show in a matter of seconds or minutes what uh, will be happening in the oceans over course of years. Um, this is actually acetic acid, so it's, very, it's actually the same type of acid that's found in some ant bites, fire ant bites for example. It's not a poison, it's actually just very mild acid. So using uh, a strong vinegar at home with just a moral rock, and particularly if you grind it down, that's what these small bubbles are here, you will see um, the calcium carbonate begin to be dissolved by the acid. It'll give off bubbles. Again, we won't see those tiny bubbles forming on the reef, but this is just, this is the chemistry that's going to be happening on our reefs. It's, it's chemistry, there's no escaping it. Climate change's impact on invasive species is actually kind of subtle, unfortunately. We all understand invasive species like this scaviola over here. They come into some place where they're not from, they find the environment suits them well, and they take over. The thing with, it, with climate change is that's going to change the environment, obviously, and so we're likely to see new species coming in. Once something becomes established, like the scaviola on the beaches or the green iguanas, getting rid of them is a huge challenge. The problem is catching them before they become established, when there's only a few of them and you never see them. That's the big problem. Climate change for nesting turtles um, basically affects it in three major ways. The first is erosion of nesting beaches. The second way is with the increased temperatures, we also can increase what's known as sort of the pivotal temperatures for um, incubation. Once the temperature goes above 34 degrees C, turtles' eggs can't incubate and they'll end up dying. The third part, um, as most people know, Turtles are reptiles and their sex is determined by temperature and incubation temperature. So with the increase in um, global temperatures, you're going to have skewed in sex ratios. You'll actually have more females than males. And there's a lot that the population can do. One is just being conscious, first of all, about your carbon footprint. Uh, some people might think, well, me turning off lights really isn't going to be a big deal, but it, it makes a big difference. The big challenge with something like ocean acidification as part of climate change is there's very little that someplace, somebody like the Department of Environment can do. There's not even a whole lot that people, that individuals or even the country can do. This, is going to this, was a this is a global change. It's going to require global action. If the world does not commit to reducing carbon dioxide and the, being pumped into the atmosphere to reducing the threat of global warming, this is going to happen. It is a global change. It's going to require a global change to fix it.